Canada's only national touring series trades in the high banks for airport runways here at Circuit ICAR as the NASCAR Pinty Series begins the sprint into summer. NASCAR's Northern Tour has witnessed three different races at our first three tracks. Lacroix outran the competition in the rain at CTMP, while Alex LeBay mastered the half mile at Delaware Speedway. Last week in Valley Junction, Quebec, Latsevich outpaced the field in his first win. Icar is another beast where Andrew Ranger has dominated with his Mopar muscle. Welcome to the International Center of Advanced Racing. We're at Circuit Icar in Mirabel, Quebec for the Echo Unlimited 75 presented by Continental Tire. Hi, I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Tanya Baudet and Todd Lewis, both trackside today. Adam, we're at the always evolving and ever-changing road course just north of Montreal. And Icar is the second road course event of the 13 race season and it kicks off a busy month of July, Dave. And you see that man right there, the number 32 of Alex LeBay from Victoriaville, Quebec. He's tops in the 2017 championship point standings. It's because of his strong oval track finishes of late. Kevin Lacroix, though, a strong second with a defending champion, Caden Lapsevich, sitting in third. And all three of them really took to this new configuration in practice earlier today. And you're right, things have changed this year here at ICAR. And with more on what the drivers think, let's send it down trackside to our very own Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, guys. Yeah, we've undergone quite a transformation from 15 turns down to seven on what many are calling a roval course now. Even though the course is less than half the length of the original configuration, there's plenty of passing, three mini straights, and lots of tight left-hand turns. Talked to a number of drivers earlier today, and in general, it gets a big thumbs up. It's going to be hard on, on the equipment. It's going to be hard on brakes, hard on tire. There's no straightaway to cool everything down. Plus, it's going to be physical. I mean, you're busy all the time. So short track racing, but instead of like talking about an oval, we're talking about a road course, and uh, that's going to be tough. It's going to be a great show for the fans. Uh, for the drivers, we like longer tracks, but you know what? Uh, I enjoy the lot, that little twisty track, and uh, it reminds me karting. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's too bad they changed the track. Have a lot of wind here, so uh, no, it's fun. It's a good challenge for us. Uh, it makes smaller. I think it's going to be much spectacular for the fans. But I'm very happy. It's a nice track, nice facility. Guys, the general buzz around this track from the fans, from the drivers, it's going to be racy. Even though it's a short track, there will be plenty of action. Todd, the races in the past here at ICAR have been eventful, to say the least, but quick. The folks here at ICAR like to keep evolving, hence this new layout. Yeah, I think it's been a really good collaboration between NASCAR and the track promoter who has tried to generate some excitement. The drivers always like a new challenge, and in general, I think it's worked really well so far. For one driver, it worked exceptionally well during qualifying. There was a lot of strategy that played out during the qualifying session, and it was Alex Tagliani who scored his third pole here at Circuit ICAR, the first, of course, on this new configuration. He posted a time of 49.304 seconds late in the session. He let everybody run their hot laps, and then he put in his quick one late. He eclipsed the outside pole sitter, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, who also had a time that looked like it might stand up before Alex Tagliani. Tagliani managed to get the pole. Now let's get things rolling with today's command to fire engines. <laughs> J.F. Dumoulin, the first to hit the switch to fire up the engine in his Dodge as the rest of the drivers follow suit. There is your pole sitter, Alex Tagliani, as the engine fires on his Dodge. This driver here, Anthony Simone, he looked quick in practice. I'm looking forward to watching him. LP Dumoulin will be on board with the WeatherTech number 47 Dodge. And as the Dodge Ram Rebel gets the field rolling, let's take a look at the circuit in our E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. Adam, we mentioned it's a pretty short 1.1 kilometer seven turn track, but there are three really good passing spots. Turn one, turn three, turn five are the obvious braking zones where you can pass, but you want to watch some hair-raising moves, keep your eyes on turn two and turn four, high-speed corners. This one's going to be fun. Let's take a look at today's Pinty's starting lineup. Alex Tagliani, Kevin Lacroix make up row number one. We'll look back to row number two, and Alex LeBay in the 32-year points leader will start alongside Andrew Ranger. 
Defending champion Caden Lapsovich will start fifth, and Mark Antoine Cameron in a new ride, rolling off from the sixth position in the 22. LP Dumoulin in the 47, and how about Matthew Scannell in that 0-2 on Vic Four? Row number five, hometown boy Eli Arsenault in the 0-3, Anthony Simone, there you mentioned in the 95. Row six is J.F. Dumoulin and Simone Zion Vien in the 25. Row number seven brings us to DJ Kennington in the Casserole Edge 17 and Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine Ford. And then towards the back of the field, David Michaud in the 56 and Raymond Gay in the 20. Starting shotgun, the number eight of Larry Jackson all by himself in row number nine. You want a story, Larry Jackson drove directly here. He is a firefighter in Mississauga, got off shift, drove to the races and here he is now. Guys, just before we go green, a couple of cars to keep an eye on. One, of course, the 03 of Eli Arsenault, who works here at iCar and joins us for this event every year. Had a pretty good qualifying effort. He will start ninth. And also the 22, we welcome back to the series, Mark Antoine Camerant, who's working with Scott Steckley in that 22 racing team. Also a very good qualifying effort. He starts sixth today. He's going to run a total of four events, and he has been very quick when we've seen him in the past. Thanks, Todd. And that's a really cool deal for Camerant. And numerous drivers have tried to wheel that 22 to a road course victory. Unsuccessful so far. We're about to find out if Cameron can get it done. The field lines up two by two as they make their way through the final turns, heading towards the green flag. Here at Sir Kriakar, just outside of Montreal, the green is up and we're underway in the Echo Unlimited 75. What a first turn. A tight hairpin to start things off, and Kevin LaCroix got pushed off the racetrack. Yeah, that was a hairy. The hairpin corner being turn number one always leads to fantastic starts and restarts. And here's the big change. Hairpin turn, they used to turn right. Now it's a 180-degree turn to the left. And it's yet another passing opportunity. That's turn number three as we ride on board with J.F. Dumoulin in the Spectra Premium Dodge. And look at JF, look to the right. There is going to be a lot of checking of blind spots. The spotters have a good vantage point here at the facility, but these drivers are nervous about the tight confines of this road course. Well, you heard some of the drivers talking about it. It's like a short track road course, and we're racing for the first time here in the evening. And Ranger to the inside of Alex LeMay down into turn one. Hello there. Ranger manages to get around the... Can-Am number 32 of Alex LeBay. Remember, he's your points leader, so he's going to be a little cautious here in the early going. And the conversation all day long. A lot of things are unique about this race. For the first time in the history of the series, Dave, a one-day road course event. All of this packed into one day. This is a 75-lap race. Even though the track is shorter, there's more heavy braking zones than ever. I spoke with some drivers. What's going to give up first, Goodyear tires or the brakes? They are all concerned about the brakes. And there's fuel, too. That could be an issue here. Very short race, but 75 laps, or a very short circuit, 75 laps. Could that be an issue? Well, Dave, it, it could be. The way this race worked, all being in one day, these cars qualified, and then the teams were not allowed to touch them. So they have to race on the tires that they had on for qualifying. They can't add, add fuel. They cannot make adjustments. So time will tell. But nobody seemed terribly concerned. Alex Tagliani in the number 18. You heard us. Crew Chief Tyler Case speaking to him just a short time ago as he has a comfortable lead now over the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. The 27 of Andrew Ranger tucked into third. LP Dumoulin again, just as we cut to that onboard camera, you see his eyes glaring up at that mirror to see what's behind him. This is turn number five, a sharp left-hand turn, and then an S-bend where they carry a crazy amount of speed. And we've talked about how Circuit Icar is the house that Andrew Ranger built. He has been super quick here, dominant, you could say. But the 47 of LP Dumoulin, the WeatherTech Dodge, he's had five top fives here. The only other driver to do that is Andrew Ranger. Yeah, LP Dumoulin always rises to the top by the end of these races. And I expect there's going to be rabbits in this race, and there's going to be those who pace themselves. And two of the drivers I think pace themselves well are the Dumoulin brothers, JF and the Spectre Premium Zero. Four. NLP in the 47 is Simone. Gives a nudge to Arsenal in the 0-3. There's the short track coming out. And then got a little crossways as he jumped back on the gas. The 95 tucks in behind the 0-3. Echo Unlimited sponsored Dodge of Eli Arsenal. And back up at the front, we have a battle for the lead. Tagliani has 
been caught by the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And you can see it's only one car length difference, but Lacroix drives a bit deeper. Right there where they come out of one, that's where you'll see them spin the tires trying to get a run. Lacroix, the bumper to bumper dodge. There is his crew chief, Don Thompson Jr. looking on. We've got a battle at the front. We'll be back. The Echo Unlimited 75 presented by Continental Tire from Circuit Icar is brought to you by Mopar. We built it. We know it. By Pinty's, making great food fun. And by Spectra Premium, automotive parts developed and engineered in Canada. We bring you back to a battle for ninth position between the 03 of Eli Arsenault and the 95 of Anthony Simone, who locks it up, trying to put pressure on the 03. And this has been a raging battle. I think part of what Anthony was trying to do there was set up turn six and oh. seven. And you can see them. They've really been swinging the back ends of these cars around. Now he's going to go to the inside, lock up the left front. No driver in this race knows this track better than the 03 of Eli Arsenault. He's actually a driving instructor here at Cirque Free Icar. I guarantee I guarantee you nobody's ever passed him in turn one of driving school by getting into his left rear corner and moving him. Maybe Anthony Simone was just giving him a couple birthday bumps. He turns 26 today, so possibly. What better birthday present? <laughs> you saw some water on the track Ely Arsenault got into. I'm surprised that car stuck as well as it did with a wet right front tire. Well, now after getting into that battle with the 95 of Simone, he's got the 04 Spectra Premium Dodge of JF Dumoulin and the 17 Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington all over his back bumper. Yeah, Kennington's been looking for a bit of speed as he goes up over the rumble strips with JF Dumoulin going on by. Maybe you start saving some brakes and tires if you can. And you can hear it's the two things we talked about off the top of the show, saving brakes and saving tires. So uh, spotters and crew chiefs already reminding their drivers. This car is not pulling right, guys. Something's wrong. Well, and we've got a complainer. That's LP Dumla in the WeatherTech 47 saying the car's not pulling right, so he feels like he's short on horsepower. Got to put a mention out as we ride on board the 04 of JF Dumoulin, but the 02 of Matthew Scannell having a wonderful ride. You see him in eighth spot right now, keeping that car clean. He's sort of by himself on the racetrack, but doing a great job for a young driver. I miss seeing Kerry Mix on the racetrack, but Matthew Scannell is doing a great job for Kerry and Susan Mix in that Omvic 02. There's a good look at Simone Zion Vienne, the second Castrol car in here with support from Castrol in Quebec this season, running for CBRT. As the field runs by, there you see just ahead of David Michaud and the nine of Adam Martin. Oh, big trouble. That is Matthew Scannell, the 0-2. Obvious issue on the left front corner of that race car. Just dropped to the ground. I don't know if I got a, maybe a flat tire. Well, there you have it from the driver himself. It looks to be more suspension damage than a flat tire. And keep in mind, from the driver's seat, you sit so low it's a fendered car. All you can do is try to explain to your crew chief what you're feeling, and he just knows the left front has sunk down towards the track. And now it's a full course caution as the Omvic Ford comes to a rest on the speedway. You can see the officials looking in. Scannell's probably asking them, what's up with the left front? Well, and that's exactly what happens with the drivers. Because they can't see, they'll try to get a description of what it is. Relay that back to the crew. Let's take another look. That's Scannell right at the top of the screen. And you can see the dust pick up. The left front collapses. He did a nice job to keep that car under control. Second earlier, and there would have been big problems. He could have been into the wall. Todd's with his crew chief. Let's find out the latest on the 0-2. Howie Scannell, what was the call on the radio from Sun Matthew? Uh, he said something broke in the left front. The car just dropped right down on the track, and uh, that was it. Tough early end of the night for Matthew Scannell. He was running pretty solidly in this field, guys. It's heartbreak for young Scannell. He had a great run going at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as the number nine of Adam Martin is in the pits. On this particular race, you're not allowed to change tires, Dave, but you can affect the handling in different ways. They're doing it with wheel spacers, and we'll find out how it works coming right up. Getting set for the first restart of the day here at Circuit Icar. It's the fourth race of 13.
13 scheduled NASCAR Pinty Series stops in 2017. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Tanya Beaudet, both trackside covering all the action. As we get set, as we mentioned, for the first restart here on lap number 19 of the Echo Unlimited 75 presented by Continental Tire. And watch the car in third place, Dave. The inside of row number two can wreak havoc on these restarts. And there goes Ranger having a bump to the inside. Couldn't make it work. But with that hairpin corner, the second row can be crucial to these starts. That was a much tidier start than the initial one we had here this evening at Sir Bree Icar. And Lacroix took a look to the inside of the Lowe's EpiPen Dodge of Alex Tagliani. Laughs of it's way up on the outside as Cameron in the 22 digs on him. Top a little bit of contact. You saw the Ely Arsenault's fender flare up there. A little bit of rubbing, but rubbing's racing, Dave. Here goes Lacroix to the left-hand side through turn six and seven. This is a full concrete racetrack, and you can see how long it takes these Goodyear Eagles to stick to this track as even the race leader sideways off the final corner. Man, we've been watching them lap after lap. In those corners, I don't think the tires ever do stick to this concrete. Now Andrew Ranger all over the back end of Kevin Lacroix on that battle for second. Andrew Ranger did finish second to the number 74 of Kevin Lacroix back in 2015 as he dives to the inside in the Mopar Dodge. And he will take over second spot. Mopar M1 horsepower. Now we're listening to spec engine horsepower. Under the hood of Kevin Lacroix, the top three remain right together on the racetrack. Great shot out of the front windshield of Kevin Lacroix. There it is. You can see the defroster, something you would normally see in your rear window on your streetcar. Kevin Lacroix got it on his front window in case of rain. Should he need them? It's a good battle for fifth as they're coming into your screen now between the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron and the 76. Your defending series champion, Caden Lapsovich, both having a great run so far here this evening. Caden navigates turn two, headed down towards the hairpin in three. Here goes Ranger looking to the inside of Tagliani. He'll fall back in line. Lapsovich is running as much as he can all by himself conserving the car. We'll see how that pays off as we get closer to the 75 lap mark. You remember the year in 2015 that Andrew Ranger finished second to Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix got way out in front and we thought, okay, he's just waiting. Burn off his tires because it was Lacroix's first year and Ranger would eventually gobble him up. That never happened. Lacroix hung on for the win. Do you think Andrew Ranger is finally tired of sitting back in this race? Well, the drivers know it. We, we've talked about it at each of the road courses since then. The, the rules of engagement have changed. You cannot conserve too much if you're going to contend for the win. If you're a driver like the 76 of Caden Lapsovich, who might not be the obvious choice for the winner of this race, you try a different strategy. You can serve as much as you can and hope these guys use it up. It would be really hard for Lapsovich to hang right with this top three throughout the race, so he'll hang back now and hope it pays off later. Problems for the 56 of David Michaud off the track, but didn't hit anything. He'll rejoin, no caution. The top three all covered by a blanket here at Circuit Icar. And there they go through turn number seven, still wiggling these race cars, hard breaking down into turn one. Tag has hit that same line lap after lap. LP Jumle, a driver who has struggled with his WeatherTech Dodge, but we've been listening. Here are some of his radio communications. I got a short shift, otherwise it's missing too much. The gates are not working anymore. No gates working at all. Okay, turn four, just keep going. It's missing like there's no tomorrow. Well, that's veteran crew 
chief Billy Burns talking to his driver, L.P. Dumoulin, but a car with a miss and no gauges working sounds like an electrical problem, Dave, and that generally doesn't get better. And add into the that equation the fact that they don't have any scheduled pit stops here at Circuit I-Car, that's going to make it even more difficult. Now, he does have the option to change batteries and, and use different driver aids to try and figure it out inside the cockpit, but really, his hands are tied. Well, and he's losing positions, having to short shift the way he is. He's dropping to the tail end of the field. He's running in eighth right now, but he's not running very good lap times. Still your race leader, though, the Lowe's EpiPen St. Subair number 18 of Alex Tagliani. He is coming under fire, though, from the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Let's ride on board, Ranger. A third of the way through this 75 lap race, and check out that pistol grip shifter for Andrew Ranger. It's so close it is to the steering wheel just eases his hand off the wheel works the shifter that's that's impressive what david white his crew chief has set up for andrew obviously knows the driver's preference and so smooth to watch but there's a driver who's been dominant on road courses in the nascar pinty series of 22 races he's won exactly half of them 11 of them as we take a look back to a battle deeper deeper in the field you see lp dumoulin still falling back in that weather tech dodge he's pushed back to 13th now but andrew ranger consistently tries to get better he does as far as i know ranger was the first driver to use the small steering wheel which takes more endurance more more stamina but it gives him better control. That's what he likes. And you saw how close that shifter was. Everything is very confined for Ranger, just the way he wants it in his cockpit. Good look at the Spectra Premium 04 of JF Jubilee. And there is a couple Castro cars, DJ Kennington in the 17 and the 25 of Simone Zielvian. Tagliani continues to lead here at ICOC. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. One of the favorites in this event at ICAR is pulled onto pit road and to the attention of the crew at the Dumoulin Competition WeatherTech team. Yeah, LP Dumoulin was worried about this even before the start of the race, guys. He told me that they were having a bit of a problem with the ignition, and that is what has come up again during the race. Crew Chief Bill Burns gave the word, come on in. It is missing. They're not sure exactly what the problem is, and that makes it even worse. And you see LP looking over to see what work is being done. Very frustrated. Yeah, he knew he could win here at Circuit Icar in the Echo Unlimited 75. Unfortunately, his day will end early. Last year's champion, Caden Lapsovich, in a battle for sixth position with the 95, the innovative plumbing dodge challenger of Anthony Simone. I really believe, Dave, this week or next week in Toronto could be the day for Anthony Simone to crack the top five, maybe even secure a podium finish. These road courses with heavy braking zones where you really attack the course cater to his style of driving. Well, he's a short track guy, but he's also coming out of the karting ranks where he cut his teeth. So he's great on the road courses, but he's also great on the short tracks where he raced late models for years. He was as ferocious in a Formula 1600 car as the great Kevin Lacroix. I've heard a lot of comparisons between the two. He has had year after year of terrible mechanical luck. Can-Am Ford Fusion, the 32 of Alex LeBay. Good luck at the number 22, Paye Chevrolet of Mark Antoine Cameron. That's a battle for fourth spot. Cameron has two starts here at Zurich 3 Icar. His best finish of seventh coming back in 2015. Watching he and LeBay, those two cars, they have really kept them under control. They're not slinging them around like the top three are. Again, we're going to find out in about 30 laps whether or not that pays off or not, but definitely a contrast in styles. Ninth spot up for grabs here between a pair of Dodges as Kennington might have made contact there with the 03 of Eli Arsenal. Kennington got to the inside, caught the rumble strip, and it just didn't stick as they almost got together. And of course, last week, what a contrast. DJ Kennington racing the Monster Energy Cup Series at Daytona International Speedway. This week, Mirabel Quebec at Circuit Icar. Here goes Simone to the inside in turn three. Lapsovic will see him on the inside, but he still slides way to the outside, almost off the racetrack. Gathers it back up. You saw the dust and marbles out there as he loses the position as now running in seventh spot is the 76 of Lapsovich. Now they work down into turn number five, six, and seven to come.
come and Anthony Simone driving away from the 76. So Simone in the sixth spot as the lead starts to stretch out just a little bit. Alex Tagliani now about 15 car lengths over the 27 of Ranger. We've heard the crews telling these drivers, save your brakes, save your tires. That's possibly what Andrew Ranger has done. Gave it a shot. Now he's going to back off and let things cool down as Kevin Lacroix sets his sights on the 27 for second. But still your race leader is the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Alex Tagliani in this number 18 Lowe's EpiPen Dodge has led since the drop of the green flag here at Circuit Icar in Mirabel, Quebec, just outside of Montreal. A former airport turned into a road course, and it's a pretty wonderful place for a race here on this evening. You know, every year we come out, Eli Arsenault, his father Mark Arsenault, make improvements on the facility. It's such a monstrous place. It really is one thing at a time, but you can definitely see the improvements year after year. Cameron has slipped past the 32 of Alex LeBay, and we'll see how it happened. Down into turn three, a popular spot for making these passes. Goes way down to the inside, out breaks him into the corner. Survives the turn to keep the spot. Cameron set that up pretty much perfectly, and that car is working perfectly for him today. He was super excited to get in this ride for the remaining road course races here on the 2017 schedule. Well, we spoke about it earlier that 22 has not yet seen victory lane on a road course in this series. He's got his work cut out for him. The three drivers ahead of him are pretty darn good, but he's given that car a good ride today. Quick ride on board as you look back. Uh, from the 27, Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Now the 56 of David Michaud working the back bumper. The 25 of Simone Dion Vienna. Battle for 10th spot. There's been battles all over the racetrack, Dave. Maybe not for the lead. We had those three cars duking it out lap after lap. But you look deeper in the field. Some of these cars are really starting to come to the drivers. And some of them might have used up their equipment a little bit early and are drifting backwards. And how about that 56? Watch out. Yeah, you can hear the spotter for the 25 of Simone Dionvienne saying, protect the inside line, Michaud is coming. That Jim Bray owned number 56, having a great run here today. Two drivers not necessarily known for their road course prowess, both battling to get inside the top 10. You know, they're good road course racers are just having to learn their craft in a stock car. And there are intricacies of the stock car racing that they have to learn. But you want to talk about intricate. How about having to talk to your driver in French, because that's what your driver understands best, but having to listen to the NASCAR officials in English and then translate the message to your driver in French and make sure everyone's on the same page. And you're right about that. I did say Simone Zion Vien, not necessarily known for his road course prowess. He does have a history of road course racing, but you're right. These are different vehicles to try and figure out when you're turning right and left. And he overshot turn number one about a dozen times in practice, looking for the edge, looking to see how far he could take it. He hasn't done it once in the race. He obviously found where that car wants to be. And Kaden Lapsevich has found the back bumper of the 95, Anthony Simone. This is still a battle for six. Simone in the 95 had been all kinds of crossways for the first handful of laps. We've now passed the two-thirds mark of the 75 lap Echo Unlimited 75 here at Sir Free Icar. Simone seems to have settled down and hasn't seemed to have burned off those Goodyear Eagles as much as I would have suspected going sideways so much in the early going. Spinning those tires at the exit of every corner. Lapsovich looks to the inside. Now to the outside in turn three. And remember, Lapsovich, third place in points coming into this event so he does need every position to battle back up in the point standings. Now that fast corner we were talking about, turn number four, Lapsovich makes the move, Simone back to the inside in five, what a race! He'll be on the outside for a hairpin turn, he'll use the outside curving, they touch as Simone gets crossways. Simone closed the door, Lapsovich was still there, they made a bit of contact, I don't think we've seen the last of it as Kaden Lapsovich drove that car deep into turn one, and he gave Simone a knock. There's some of that short track racing to the outside, goes Lapsovich and almost around. A huge drift for the 76 of Lapsovich as Simone got into him. Simone moved over, let Lapsovich go by, and then hooked him in the corner. Here we go again down into three. And payback as Lapsovich 
Rabich gets into the back of the 95. He gives him a notch to say that he's there, but he does not turn him. The 04 of JF Dumoulin coming into your screen, so he's catching this duel. Spectra premium view of the action in front of him. You can see the damage to the left front fender of the 95 of Simone, the right rear corner of both cars as they made contact. And have a look, this is coming off of turn five into six. There was not a lot of racetrack to work with and neither driver wanted to give an inch. Now watch. You can see the 76 get close to the 95 and there now, he gives him a route. Let's see if Simone actually waves him by because he just about stopped coming out of one to let Lapsovich go by and then hook him. He was on full lock hanging on to that car. Here, have another look. He was good, hanging on to that race car. How he kept it out of the wall, I'll never know. Be smart, bud. Big picture, big picture. Be smart. That's Jeff Lapsovich, Caden's father, telling big picture race. Don't give away the farm. One battle, you can wait till the end. Can I say one thing? I love this new configuration here at Circuit iCar. It's definitely our first Roval race. <laughs> Breeds excitement as we ride on board JF Dumoulin. Still out in front, though, the Lowe's EpiPen Dodge of Alex Tagliani, and he can look in his rear view mirror and see nobody. Is a 4.2 second lead now on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. That's a lot of breathing room He's on this a, track. A couple tenths of a second a lap faster, and now we're seeing something we have never seen at ICAR, and that's shadows. Oh, problem down into turn number one. That's Adam Martin in the Johnsonville 9. Big sparks from the front end of the mixed motorsports for pair number nine. Right front. Kerry Mix on the radio saying, look for your opening. He wants that car running, driven to the pits. And here's Caden Larsevich on pit road. That car is all over the place. Full course caution for the stop number nine of Adam Martin. Have another look. Just in front of Kevin Lacroix, the sparks fly out of the Martin number nine. Actually happened in a pretty good place. We'll have another look. That was just underneath the flag stand that the part in the front end broke. And Caden Lapsovich on pit road. This has huge points implications for the number 76. Remember, he came into this one third in points. Todd's down pit lane. Todd? After assessment, guys, it is the trailing arm that is ripped out of that 76 car. That's why the right rear tire was askew. Engine now off. Caden Lapsovich awaiting to see if they will make repairs. But that beating and banging certainly took a toll on this 76. Back with more of the Echo Unlimited 75 after this. We continue under caution here at the Echo Unlimited 75 at Circuit iCar. And one driver who's out of this one is the defending Pinty's Series champion, Todd's with him. Todd? Yeah, guys, with Caden Lapsovich, you and the 95 were racing really hard for a few laps out there. Was it that hit in turn two that did you in? I don't know. I wouldn't call that racing, so... Um... You know, I got a good run on down into three, went to the inside of him, he blocked me and cleared him on the outside out of three and he stoved it back into five and drove me off the track and, you know, I got to get another good run on him into one and he shut the door on me again and then he waited for me and stuffed me. So, you know, I guess that's what broke it. It was pretty good hit. So, uh, you know, we'll move on, we'll go to Toronto and, uh, you know, this probably won't be the end of that. End of the night tonight at ICAR for the defending series champion. And Toronto is a mean place to pay back because there's walls on both sides. Not a lot of runoff room. As we go back to green, DJ Kennington received the free pass. He's now at 11. Whoa, contact in turn number one. Lacroix slides into Tagliani. Ranger winds up nowhere. He's well out of the top five. The big loser, the 27 Mopar Dodge in that melee. Well, 15 laps to go. We can see who's got brakes and who doesn't, who chooses to use them and who doesn't. Ranger way down to the inside into turn three. There is still a puddle on the inside of turn number three, just as the drivers are jumping on the brakes. You can see a battle for a second now between Mark Antoine Cameron and Alex LeBay, your race leader at the restart. The 18 of Alex Tagliani back to fourth. And he clears Mark Antoine.
on Cameron down in front of LeBay, and here goes Tagliani to the inside. He is racing angry right now. Do you see the sparks from the 32 as he bounced off the curbing yeah. on turn seven? We've never seen racing this late in the day at ICAR. You can see the shadows forming. There's going to be bright sunlight in some portions of this racetrack right into the eyes of these drivers. How about this driver, J.F. Dumoulin in the 04 Spectra Premium Dodge? He's having a wonderful ride. Picked up a ton of spots on that restart. He's got Ranger on his back bumper. But let's have another look at that restart. Kevin Lacroix down the inside. That car is pitched sideways. I don't know how he saved it. Well, I do know how he saved it. He used the 18 of Alex Tagliani, and the seas absolutely parted for Mark Antoine Camerand. It's pretty much a land rush start. You saw five wide at one point. Another angle. Whoa, that was a mean hit. Remember earlier? We talked about third place on the restarts. You can make a big mess from the inside of row two. Cameron picked up a bunch of spots. He saw the 27, the 18 shoved way out to the outside. And now Cameron for the lead in the 22 to the inside of the 74. Wow, I thought Lacroix was going to slam the door. He did not. Cameron couldn't quite get through three as well as the race leader. But what a battle as we approach the end of this race. Now into turn number five. Cameron not quite there to make a run as he slides it through five. What we've seen all night long is these drivers setting up moves the way you would on an oval. So you try to pitch the car a certain way in one corner. He's not doing it here. Cameron goes to the inside. I'm not sure what he wanted to achieve there. That would have been a tough pass to make, but he might be looking in the rear view mirror and tag the any closing in a hurry. Kevin Lacroix on the bumper to bumper Dodge has won every single road course since the GP3R last year. He is dominant when these cars turn left and right, but here comes camera to the inside once again. And Tagliani, I wanted to see if he was going to get up on the bumper of Lacroix. He did not. Runs in the third position. Lacroix runs second. The Pie Chevrolet number 22 now gets a bump and slides to the outside as Lacroix looks to regain the top spot. And that slide's going to affect him all the way into turn one. He lost forward momentum. Let's see. No, Lacroix checks up early. Tagliani to the inside. And now they're side by side through turn number one. A hairpin as Lacroix out to the outside curvy. Here's a 32 of Alex LeBay now on the outside in turn number two. And this track of all tracks, if you're on the outside of one corner, hang in there. You're going to be on the inside of the next one. Ten laps to go and the intensity on track is definitely showing it. Ranger to the inside of the 04 of Dumoulin. That is the top six cars. I'd say they're nose to tail, but they're certainly not. <laughs> they're fender to fender, bumper to bumper, everybody looking for an edge. Ranger downshifting and hard on the brakes, trying to gain as much real estate back that he lost off that restart. Cameron in the number 22 continues to lead. The Chevrolet out in front, followed by a pair of Dodges, the 18 of Tagliani. 22 crew chief Randy Stackley telling Mark Antoine Cameron, hit your marks, he'll have nothing for you. We're about to find out. You're watching NASCAR on TSN. The man from St. Leonard, Daston, Quebec, Mark Antoine Cameron leads the Echo Unlimited 75, presented by Continental Tire with just five laps to go. Battle for third spot there between Lacroix and the 32 of LaBay, but that in the 27 of Andrew Ranger to this dice. Ranger looking on as LaBay held off Lacroix that time. Down into turn number Whoa, five, contact. contact. Lacroix into the left rear corner of LaBay, and he's made move a number of times now right into the corner of the car kicks it sideways and drives on through so the 32 of LeBay goes from third all the way back to fifth and you mentioned Adam that was a loss of momentum for the bump of Lacroix that really hurt the 32 of LeBay on 
on board. Andrew Ranger, your leader, continues to be the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, but he has company. The Lowe's Dodge Challenger of Alex Tagliani sat on pole here at Sir Cree Icar, led nearly all of the laps here today, and now Mark Antoine, on, uh, Mark Antoine Cameron in front, and Tagliani pressuring him. And they're closing in on a fast lap car. That's DJ Kennington just ahead of them, who's a veteran and a sportsman. He'll give them the room that they need, but he's not going to lay over. Mark Antoine Cameron has to time it so he gets to the lap traffic at, at an appropriate time that he can make the move and not lose ground or open the door to Tagliani. Trouble for J.F. Dumoulin. With just three laps to go, the 4 of J.F. Dumoulin off the pace in the Spectrum Premium Dodge. And he's cranking the car over. There is no fire in the 04. He's on pit lane, but well, still slowing. He's still on the racetrack technically. As we remain under green, they do work through lap traffic. That's the leaders, and now a full course caution. Oh, my goodness. Eli and we've got Arsenault, another slow also car. Slow. Ely Arsenault is going down into turn one. J.F. Dumoulin is going into turn two. So they're both really in spots. Um, J.F. Dumoulin was actually... Yes. He's on pit road, but he is still technically on the racetrack. The 03 of Eli Arsenault on the front stretch where he came to a stop. So definitely both cars in peril. We'll get the track cleaned up. Who's going to find the pot of gold at the end of this rainbow? It'll be a green white checker when we return. Welcome back to Sir Free Icar. It seems that DJ Kennington in the 17 is now out of fuel, being pushed on pit road. We have the 04, the 03, 95, now the 17 who have all run out of gas. Dave, the teams were allowed 22 gallons of fuel for qualifying and the race. Some drivers did more than four laps for qualifying with shoot up fuel, and some engines are just hungrier than others. But this is a surprise to me. And we are into NASCAR overtime here in the Echo Unlimited 75 at Cirque Re Icar. Mark Antoine Cameron, Alex Tagliani will lead him back to green. Let's see how the start plays out this time. Cameron deep into turn number one. Oh, maybe too deep. They're three wide. Lock one to the inside. Tag makes contact with Cameron. They both get back on the racetrack, but both lose positions. Simone Giovi and way up on the outside in turn number two. The brakes and fall in behind Tag. Here goes Lacroix down into three with Andrew Ranger hot on his heels. And out of Alex LeBay in there, Cameron will shear off a of fender in the 22 as he makes contact with the 32. Alex LeBay driving into the sunset, trying to crack the podium top three as Alex Tagliani shoves his way down to turn five. Boy, you can almost see the steam coming from the cockpit of the number 22 and now from the 32 as. LeBay gives a little payback to the 18 of Alex Tagliani. White flag is out. One more lap to go. Andrew Ranger closes in. One car length off the back bumper of LaCroix as they race to turn two. Give me one more good lap. That's Don Thompson Jr. to his driver, Kevin LaCroix, as we have a battle deeper in the field. The 32 of LeBay and the 18 of Tagliani side by side. They're running, and Tagliani drives hard to the inside to try and protect that position. Fourth place up for grabs. He will not be able to do it as Alex LeBay gets the spot to the inside. Andrew Ranger building momentum up through four. Down into five. Can he make a move? Ranger looking to the inside. LaCroix taking a little bit of an outside line. They make contact. Ranger into the back bumper, the 74. All over the back end as they come off a turn number seven. margin of victory. Mark Antoine Cameron will come home in third spot, but cheers all around in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper pit as Kevin Lacroix takes home the win here at Sir Free Icar. Taking off the safety gear. He may want to leave that on until he gets to victory lane. That's where we'll be. With his sixth career NASCAR victory, Kevin Lacroix celebrated just moments ago, smoking the tires here at Sir Cree Icar. And Dave, they too ran out of fuel after the donuts, and the crew has pushed their driver to victory lane where Todd joins the celebration. With a little help from his team to get him here to victory lane, Kevin Lacroix with smiles and a wave of the checkered flag, a kiss from his wife Joni, and you did too many burnouts out there, you, but I think you ran you out of fuel, but what a battle at the end of this race. Yeah, it was uh, quite a tough battle. I would say I want uh, it's not the kind of win I like, 
I uh, had some braking issues. It made me hit some other drivers, and I, I know I didn't uh, get any more friends uh, today, but uh, still need to celebrate when you win. Uh, but fortunately, uh, I have to make some excuse. But uh, it's, uh, it's good for the fans and uh, good for the show, and so happy for the points. Great show for the fans, and win number two of the season for Kevin Lacroix. Andrew, we talked about it this morning. It's a really tough track, new configuration. Tell me, how did it go for you? I think it was uh, pretty good. You know, very happy about uh, our Mopar car. Uh, we've been fast all day. Uh, we missed our little uh, start. We have a bing bang with the 74 again, but uh, I think it was good for the show. Uh, people like it, and uh, we have a great, pretty good second position. So we are proud of it, and it's good for the championship. Andrew Ranger, second place finish at Echo Unlimited 75. Thanks very much, Tanya. And we'll take a look at the top 10 finishers here at Circuit iCar. You see Alex LeBay coming home in fourth. Tagliani has to be disappointed with a top five finish. But how about Dion Vienne finishing sixth? Larry Jackson finishing seventh. That's a great run for those guys. David Michaud rounding out the top 10. And Todd's with your third place finisher. Todd? Mark Antoine Cambrai, this is a pretty successful return to the NASCAR Pinty Series for you. A terrific outing. Thank you. That was close. I mean, thanks to... Uh my sponsor, GM Payet, that's, uh, that's to me, you know, they make that come true. Nice to be back. That was so close. I thought at the end, you know, I thought really that was my first win. But uh, when the, the last yellow comes out, I was kind of a uh, little bit upset. But, I mean, that's racing. Uh, get caught on the last restart. You know what? Really happy to be back. Thanks again to my sponsor, GM Payet. And when I, I'm going to get one until the end. No doubt about it. Mark Antoine Cameron with a podium finish at ICAR. That win is probably coming very shortly, but a shake-up in the points. Kevin Lacroix goes to the top. Alex LeBay back to second, but only five points back. A tough day for Dumoulin and Caden Lasovich, 24 and 25 points behind the points lead. Well, the drivers taking their steps on the podium as the time comes to spray the champagne. Another road course victory for Kevin Lacroix. A bittersweet podium, some hard feelings up there as well. This NASCAR Pinty Series race has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn, and by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on Honey of Loop. The bumper to bumper team celebrates an exciting win, and we're back to the streets of Toronto next week, Dave. The Pinty's Grand Prix of Toronto for all of us here at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you next time. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.